Okay, so I'd like to talk about how patterns uh, affect a character or design, or maybe in this case, a little fashion design. Um, for one thing, I, uh, I can show you a few of the patterns that I, I tend to use a lot um, when I deal with hair and clothing, that sort of thing. So one thing about the hair is um, if you look at this little area here, I draw a head. A lot of times I like to make so that the hair, well, this is only one of many hair patterns or building blocks that I can use is to have the hair fall straight off. But as it comes towards the end, it does something like this. And the reason why I'm doing things like this, well, the reason why I go straight and then suddenly kind of near the bottom begins to, to get a little bit more wavy, um, right? That's because if you look at the length of the hair, right, as it does something like this, Look at the length of the hair. The, the hair up here, okay, the, the part of the hair up here has to support the weight of the entire length of the hair, right? So this area might be naturally curly, but then it's being dragged down by all, by all the rest of that long hair, so it stays straight. And the same can be said for the area here, the area here, and then as we get closer and closer to the bottom, right, then it means that the hair, there's less hair, right? So basically, the hair at the very bottom doesn't have to support any weight. If anything, it's being supported by the hair above it. Right? So that's what's happening is, is it's, um, it's being held up by all the other, by the rest of the hair. Now what I'm doing is I'm carving into this and I'm making it three-dimensional. I'm giving it some actual volume. Maybe I'll fix that up. All right, so you just get right in into the pixels, and you can you can give it some form. All right, so that is something that I tend to do with long hairs. I tend to make the hair a lot straighter at the top, and then it gets more wavy and curly at the bottom. Um, what else do I do? You know, over here in the back. All right, this is what this is. Um, it's like it's the radial modifier that I use on the landscapes. Right, except in this case, I'm I'm curling. Then I can go straight, and I can, I can use another kind of long piece. So I'm just, I'm really just uh, mixing it up to get that kind of a, a shape. And I guess that's something again that that just it comes with practice um, to get these kind of uh, these very lively looking lines. Uh, it's not scribbling. I'm never going, blah, 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 you know, it just it doesn't work out. Uh, but you know, instead, I'm, I'm just. It, you'll notice how just how slowly. You know, I, I'm really working. I'm working um, quite slowly. And a lot of times I will undo and redo until I get the shape that I want. Um, you know, so it's it's very deliberate, uh, any of these kinds of lines that you see. So anytime, it's, it's funny. It's like I hear it very often that people say, you know, it, it's very energetic and, uh, you know, it's very lively. But in, in, in the case of, you know, how I work, it's actually really slow and um, just deliberate. Okay, so what else can we do? Um, you know, these stockings are just straight lines. They're pretty boring. Um, I can do a lot more. You know, I can add a border edge to that, or I can make the border edge maybe a little um, wider. You know, I can make little, the whole top part, right? The border edge is really, really wide. Right? So there's no, you know, it's like you can you can really uh, mess around for how, with how long you want it to be. Uh, and, and then I can thicken this, right? So maybe it becomes, instead of a, a stocking, it becomes more like a boot. So I can, you know, turn that into a big thick boot. Um, so it looks like she's wearing boots now. Or I can... Here, remember that zigzag, right? The alternating zigzag in the landscapes? It's the same thing. I can... Right, alternating. Large, small, large, small. So large, small, large, small. It's the same thing. So I can do that on the stockings. Uh, what else can I do? You know, I could... I could also add a, you know, let's do a, a, a fine border edge, right? So it's a very skinny border edge. And then, uh, here, maybe I can, I can cut into this. And then, right, so you can do that. that that's not bad. Um, what else can I do? Let me delete this layer because I'm really not using it. Uh, I'm going to 
erase and redraw this slightly differently. So I can start with something that's I'll start straight and then I'll go up by a bit and I'll have a little 45. You see that? There's this little 45 degree angle there. So I'll do the same for the other one. I'll just cut that away. I can go up by 45 and then see. So I go maybe about half of the way or a third of the way. Usually maybe usually it's about a third of the way over. And once you do this motif, right, is you can stay with the same motif over the entire drawing. I'll show you do it. Like, yeah, I can go up and then go around. So there, that that same motif that I used, you know, over here, I can use on on the skirt as well. Right. And this now it starts to look kind of futuristic. This is a it starts to look like kind of a sci-fi theme. Uh, what else can I do? You know, I can go at the, the very edge of the skirt and, you know, you can apply that same alternating zigzag. I really don't have that, you know, I, I don't have um, a wide repertoire, you know, a very large repertoire of, uh, of patterns. I only have a few that I use. But I use them over and over and it's where I place them um, that really makes all the difference. Right, so I could do that. I could do the border edge thing. Maybe here on the corner, what I'll do is I'll, right, so I can split into that a second time. If I want, I can probably split into it a third time. Like that. You know, maybe I can just keep on going. You know, I can subdivide. So these are things that you can do as well to add uh, some detail if you're looking for patterns. Maybe I, w I think I kind of like it uh, right about there. And just like that, that's enough, right? So I don't, sometimes it's nice to leave these little blank gaps. It looks better. What else can I do? You know, I could add pockets. I can add like a little, little pocket of the dress. Or since I'm already doing the uh, that little... Right. I can just follow along with that same motif when I add a pocket to the dress. Maybe what I, what I should do is I should curve. Right. So even though you're even though I'm using patterns, you know, um, right. Make them make them follow make them follow the form of the dress. Uh, I can add a seam line. So seam lines to me are really important because they make the dress feel like it's tailored. And did you, did you just see that that little thing right there? That that's Maybe that's because where the arm is pressing up, this is where the cloth gets a little bit loose, uh, or actually uh, bunched up. And uh, I, I'll do the same thing. And this time I'm going to bump out. See that? I'm bumping out this way. I'm going to exaggerate just so you see how that works. Right. Now maybe what I don't like is the fact that the seam line is running directly into the pocket. So uh, here, I'm going to remove the pocket for now. And then I'm going to look at that seam line. And I've also once I hit this, once I hit the uh, the hem of the dress, or the, the rather this border edge, you know, I've also purposely bumped it as well because it's, it's like it makes it look like it's made of a different, uh, slightly different fabric. And then up here, I can I'm just kind of adding. I'm making that fold really kind of come over. I can shade that. I can probably do the same. Add a little bit of, yeah, maybe it's not, no, nah, it's not necessary. Okay, so how about here? You know, I can, same deal. Right, so I'm, I'm showing how the folds are being made, you know, how the folds are. And I'm just, you know, kind of getting rid of some of those areas that are a little too dark. And uh, let's clean up this crap here. Okay. All right. And if I want, again, I can I can double seam this. I'm just going in there with the second line, just to really accentuate that seam, like that. Or maybe what I'll do is I'll let me cut that away, make that go around. Let's see how that looks, right? 
So that's the other thing is, is that you, ah, it doesn't look quite as good. Um, is that always zoom out? You know, I zoom in to get the control that I need. And then I zoom out to see how it looks, right? And so I make my decisions from out here. Make your decisions from out here and then zoom in to get the control. Draw, make your change and then zoom back out. So. There we go. And then what else can I do? You know, I kind of want to add like another layer to this dress. So uh, I'm going to just, I'm going to cut it right here. And maybe what I'll do is I'm going to just cut away this piece here. And I'm going to allow that to flare out just a bit and then there and then there we are bring that in extend those two line, lines it's there now it's just got that little bit of a lip to it and it goes out and it goes in I can just cut this bit away there we are so and and then maybe one thing I'll do as well is I'm going to take that seam line from the first from the lower layer and I'm purposely going to mismatch it right so now it's mismatched and then I can add another border edge maybe this one I'll mismatch there as well All right so you have to add these little imperfections into the dress All right so like having it mismatch down there you know just it's a it's a small change doesn't really take much of your time just makes it look a little bit more you know manufactured and uh, I can add maybe a bit of a, a shadow so there's an under shadow here there we go what else can I do you know, maybe uh, I think for a second uh, right out here We've got, well, we got the hair kind of covering this part up. I'm going to just eliminate these bits, these lines, and if it still looks good from a distance, then I'll, I'll leave it like that. Yeah, it looks better. It looks like the hair is now, you know, really flowing over that. And now I can, let's add another piece right here. Right, make that overlap. Just thickening that a bit. Oops. Need that line back in there. And I'm purposely, you know, putting another, it's like a double bump. So the double bump there, I'm going to have to move these over again. line here. The double bump makes that look like, you know, it's got a second wrinkle. Border edge that. All that looks a lot better. And then maybe, uh, well, since I already have this line here, I'm going to make use of it. I'm going to make it into a bit of a collar, a, a slight mini V. a bit of an opening here and then find the other edge of the opening up there so it's kind of a diamond shape and I can eliminate these lines oops
trying to deal with how the fabric uh, stretches between the two things. Uh, it be, oh, damn it. Wrong. Freaking. Here we are. Okay, there we go. I'll add a slight, uh, another double bump over here. That's an area which is um, under slight compression. That's more like it. So now it looks a little bit more solid. Um, what else can I do? Right, looking down here at the shoes or the. Uh, I'm gonna, you notice how how I just kind of keep things as these really big solid, you know, box-like stumps, and you know that gives me a lot of material that I can kind of work with. I didn't wind up doing much. No, I kind of don't want to. <laughs> it's like some areas I like to leave them simple. Um, my own intuition is going to just kind of fight against me when I add want to add detail in an area that just I don't know. Yeah, I, that's that's kind of the hardest, a frustrating thing is that sometimes you know I have my own intuition that tells me you know that it doesn't look good with that detail in there if I add it. So, you know, I will undo that little change and I'll I'll get rid of that detail. And you know, it's just, it's just spidey sense. I guess the more that you work at things, the more that you kind of um what you have to do is you have to look at a lot of other artists' work and figure out, you know, what find out which artist you really like and find out what you know, not just one artist, but find out find many different artists. And the reason you need many different artists is you need a basis for comparison. You need to be able to figure out what do the, the, of, the of all the artists that you like, what do they have in common? Um, you need to know, you know, you need to follow many artists to be able to compare and find out what they have in common. And through that, that is how you develop your spidey sense. That's how you develop your sense for when something is not working. That's how you develop that. So, okay, what else can I do? You know, it's like, it's like I'm not, I'm not, I'm very carefully, very slowly, you know, adding details in. I look at it from afar because this is the thing is that your audience, they do not zoom in on the image. Um, you know, like I, I just know, it's like if I, whenever I post anything on DeviantArt, I can tell how many people, I always post up the high res 2560 by 1600 images. If a person really wants to zoom in, they'll download it and I can tell. I, I'll, I'll tell you right now, you know, that maybe one out of uh, 20, maybe one out of 30 people, one out of 30 people probably, that, that's being pretty generous. One out of 30 people will actually download, you know, the, the full res image to see the details. People generally do not uh, zoom in all that much, do not download. And so this is why it's really important. Um, to make sure that your image looks good from afar because most people are essentially going to be looking at your image from afar, not when they're zoomed in. The reason I zoom in is just because I need the control. I control the pen, not because I like to, you know, see how it looks from up close. I kind of hate being up close because I instantly feel kind of claustrophobic and I feel like I don't know what's going on outside, outside of my field of vision. Okay, so maybe I'll just add another layer. You know, it's like just as I added a layer for the skirt, you know, I want to add another layer for the sleeves. And I'll double edge it. Maybe I'll add a small a V slit as well. Oh, that looks much better. You know, and then just maybe on this inner layer I can Add a few hatch lines. This kind of helps suggest that this is made of a slightly different material.
it has you know different optical properties. I'll hatch this as well to show that it's uh, shaded. Yeah. Okay. I can do the same for here. Maybe I can cast a shadow as well. Well, maybe I have to make the shadow kind of run over the hand. Right, so even though this is you know very much a manga uh, influenced style of drawing, which is very simplistic, there's still a lot of you know attend like all of my time that I've spent painting, learning how to paint, like it's all kind of coming back. And even though it's a sketch. You know, it's like being able to render and deal with, um, you know, light and shadow and materials. It's, it's all relevant. I, you know, I wouldn't be able to do this shading accurately if it wasn't for my time working, um, you know, doing, doing that shade, you know, doing all that painting. So kind of, you know, it's just my way of saying, you know, don't just say, I'm going to be a manga artist and, and, you know, never, never do anything else. You know, do other forms of painting, you know, do paint, do learn to paint, like do life drawing and, and draw realistically, draw the classic way because you know, it's going to strengthen, it's all going to come back and it's going to strengthen your way of doing the cartoony stuff. Right now you can see how much more kind of, uh, I won't say real, but more solid looking. It feels more tangible. You know, I can probably even add a shadow here. I'll cast shadow and maybe make the shadow a little deeper around the feet, around the point of contact. Right, so it's still a simple, it's still a very simple dress. I haven't really changed much, um, you know, but it. Oh, let's get rid of those lines. But at the same time, you know, it feels kind of detailed as well. What else can I do? Ah, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to change the way that the lines are inked. So I'm going to have, I'm going to make these areas a lot thicker. Um, yeah, I'm going to go over the entire outer edge. Right, I'm really making the outer edge very bold. I think I'll just triple line. I don't want to spend too much time on this. I don't have that much. Well, the longer I spend working on this, the bigger the video gets, and then the longer it takes for it to upload, and then also the more bandwidth it eats up. In Canada, we don't get really great bandwidth plans. Um, that and... And I'm kind of tired of doing odd jobs for a living. I, I would really like to, you know, do art for a living. Or at least, you know. It's like I, I do teach online at a school. But it's, um, not everybody, got, you know, not everybody comes. Not everybody, uh. I get I, I have basically a lot more uh, a lot much larger audience on YouTube. They're generally a little bit more uh, vocal, which is nice. I get a lot more feedback here. You know, I would really like to do this for a job. You know, I'd be willing to put out a lot more videos. Um, but the only problem is, you know, it kind of doesn't pay very well. Uh, I know I could monetize my videos. I just I really. I really hate seeing ads on YouTube. You know, I, they, I'm always having to close them. They're generally a nuisance. And, uh, and I would rather not, you know, drive people away by putting ads that, you know, that don't, that basically make 
the learning experience more distracting. I would rather get rid of those ads, just not put them on. You know, so, and you know, just make the voluntary, make the donations just voluntary. Uh, and no, I'm not going to put pop-ups. I'm not going to do those pop-up annotations that say "donate now." That just again, it's one of those things that's just kind of a pet peeve, and uh, and I don't want to inflict that on my viewers who have been so nice to subscribe to me and say nice things about me. It's not how I repay them. Cutting way lines. So if you want to donate, um, which is absolutely fantastic, the more that people donates, the more, the more that I can do this for a living, the less that I have to take off, take on odd jobs, and then suddenly disappear for months at a time. So just doing major lines on all the major forms, thicker lines on the on the major forms, and also on the outline. Um, Another thing is that the closer an object is, the thicker I make the line. So, I guess, how do I explain this? It's like this leg here on the left is closer than the one on the right. So I'm going to thicken this line up like crazy. Because the thicker the line gets, the, the closer the object feels. And then the other thing you can do is when you're thickening lines, right? Like watch this. If I do that, right? You notice how the bottom the bottom part of the line feels a little heavier? I'm I'm applying more pressure on the pen to make the bottom thicker. So the thickness of a line, to me, is also kind of a factor of how close that particular portion of the line is. Right. So this way I can make something that is, you know, far, like this, this part is far, right? And then this part here is getting, you know, closer. That's what I'm doing with that line is I'm, I'm getting some depth, some depth information into the line itself. Let's, let's clean up the silhouette. Here. Okay. So that's pretty simple. Maybe next, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna end this uh, video right here, and then afterwards I'll talk a little bit about, um, I guess, my own brand of color theory. Okay.